Hello, and welcome to the TI Precision Labs on clocking JESD 204B or C systems. JESD 204B or C clocking can help simplify your design while achieving deterministic data sampling between multiple ADCs, DACs, and the backend logic device. In this video, we'll discuss how JESD 204B or C clocking differs from traditional clocking schemes and then dive into the system clocking details. How does JESD 204B clocking differ from traditional clocking? In a traditional system, each converter and logic device gets a clock. The left portion of this slide shows the ADC and FPGA receiving a signal of clock. Synchronization of the data is left up to the user. In a JESD 204B system, each converter and logic device gets a device clock and a sysref. The right portion of this slide shows the ADC and FPGA both receiving a device clock and sysref. The sample clock in JESD 204B may actually be a divided down frequency of the device clock. Other JESD 204B clocks, such as the frame clock and the local multi-frame clock, are also derived from the device clock. The sysref informs the receiver to reset these dividers. When reset, the clocks will be deterministic to all other clocks in the system. When the JESD 204B system has been deterministically synchronized, the user can then know the time between samples within the period of an LMFC. What is JESD 204? Well, it's a standard to enable a serialized interface between data converters and logic devices such as FPGAs or ASICs. From the revision B release, there was a major step forward when the standard added support for deterministic latency. We will use the term JESD 204B to refer to both B and C as the clocking requirements are consistent between the two. JESD 204C allows for increased data lane rates, but otherwise B and C are the same for clocking considerations. There are three subclasses of operation for clock synchronization in JESD 204B. We can ignore subclass 0 as it doesn't support deterministic latency between device clocks. Subclass 2 provides deterministic timing, dual purposing a sync signal which requests an initialization sequence aligning the data serializer and deserializer. This method is not usable for high frequencies and not as popular as subclass 1. The remainder of the presentation follows subclass 1 operation. Subclass 1 provides deterministic latency using an external sysref timing signal. The basic idea is that after the rising edge of sysref, the next rising edge of the device clock becomes a time reference point and internal dividers may be reset to starting values. Sometimes more than one sysref edge is required to reset all the necessary elements for phase determinism. When using subclass 1, sysref can be sent over continuously. This is good for debug and measurement, but can cause spurious noise and consume extra power. In a later slide, we'll see how continuous mode may be momentarily used when AC coupling sysref. A single one-shot or a short succession of sysref clocks may also be used to synchronize the JESD 204B system. However, sometimes reprogramming the sysref receiving device may be required between sysrefs to mask off different elements of the JESD 204B receiver. In this case, the ability to send gapped periodic sysref or subsequent one-shots that align with the same local multi-frame clock timing is important. One design benefit to a JESD 204B system is the reduction of the number of data traces required to carry the converter data. Also, trace length matching of the data traces is not required. Here you can see very clearly the PCB simplification that JESD 204B provides. Would you rather route the traces on the left or the right? Another JESD 204B benefit is that all device clock frequencies may be the same because internal dividers at the receiver will reduce the device clock to the required frequency. This eliminates chances for crosstalk between device clocks at the clocking device and on the PCB. However, some SOCs may not be able to accept the high clock rates that some converters can, so the clocking IC may still be required to produce a reduced frequency clock. For JESD 204B subclass 1 to achieve determinism, the sysref signal must deterministically mark the same device clock rising edge from power up to power up relative to all other device clocks and sysrefs in the system. This is the key point to JESD 204B clocking and is achieved by positioning a rising edge of sysref inside the sysref valid window. The sysref valid window is defined by a minimum and maximum setup time for each device. Typically, the maximum setup time is considered as the device clock period minus the hold time. Normally, the sysref edge is designed to be inside the sysref valid window. 
and no errors occur in marking the expected device clock. But what happens if the setup and hold time are violated and a different device clock edge is marked? Suppose the sysref clock is late and the plus one cycle device clock is marked. One way to think of this case is that the device clock is digitally skewed one entire device clock. For some systems, this will be unacceptable. Other systems may be able to identify the occurrence of the apparent device clock skew and then adjust the data by one device clock period to eliminate this digital skew. To position the sysref edge in the sysref valid window, different timing adjustment options may exist depending on the clocking device being used. Device clock timing adjustments are typically used to reduce the skew between device clocks and not to position the sysref inside the valid window. The sysref timing adjustments are performed to position the sysref clock edge in the sysref valid window. Two common delay adjustment implementations are digital delay and analog delay. Digital delay is considered a coarse timing adjustment. The next few slides will illustrate different cases to calculate the margin for sysref clock to the edge of the valid window. The digital delay step size relates to the period of the clock driving the divider used for sysref output, which may be the VCO. For example, a 3 GHz clock would have a half-step adjustment of approximately 166.7 picoseconds. Analog delay is considered a fine timing adjustment and typically offers timing adjustments in the range of 10 to 150 picoseconds per step. In general, the timing variation when including analog delay adjustments will be greater over environmental conditions than if digital delay alone is used. Now for an example. Here we have a case where the sysref valid window is greater than three times the delay step size. The digital delay step size is approximately 166.7 picoseconds. This is the half period of the VCO clock. After calculating the size of the sysref valid window by subtracting the setup and hold time specified by the converter datasheet from the device clock period, we find that no matter the skew between the device clock and the sysref trace routing, three digital delay settings will occur inside the sysref valid window. When a minimum of three delay adjustment settings fall inside the valid window, the middle option can be selected and the system will have a margin of at least the delay step size. Provided the device clock to sysref skew variation is less than the step size, deterministic timing is assured. In the second example, suppose the sysref valid window is less than three times the delay adjustment size. In this case, it is not always possible to have three settings of digital delay fall within the sysref valid window. The worst case margin now occurs when the skew between the device clock and sysref results in two delay adjustments at an equal distance from the each edge of the sysref valid window. The formula for the margin is now sysref valid window minus delay step size over two. Provided the skew between the device clock and the sysref is less than this value, the sysref will be deterministic. In this example, the valid window of 300 picoseconds minus the delay step size of 200 picoseconds over 2 results in a margin of 50 picoseconds. When calculating margin, in case of non-uniform delay step size, the minimum or maximum delay step size should be used in the calculation to ensure margin for the worst case. Now that we've discussed timing considerations to ensure the sysref is in the sysref valid window, let's consider how to interface the clocks. The device clock may be AC or DC coupled. It is common to AC couple the device clock as the common mode requirements are eliminated. However, choosing to use AC or DC coupling will impact how sysref may be used in the system. DC coupling is the simplest because it allows for single pulses to synchronize the system. When DC coupling, care must be taken to ensure the proper common mode voltage is seen at the clock input. The LV Peckel example shows splitting the emitter resistor into the resistors RS and RB so that a voltage division can reduce the common mode voltage to an acceptable input level. If an AC coupled interface is chosen for sysref, a single or few pulses won't be sufficient to DC balance the clock signal, so continuous sysref must be used. When using AC coupled sysref, a procedure to 1. Turn on sysref, 2. Wait for DC balance on the clock lines. Three, allow the receiver to synchronize, often by programming a register on or off in the Jesse 204B receiver. And then four, turning off the sysref again will allow an AC coupling approach to be used to synchronize the system. This concludes our discussion of Jesse 204B and C clocking.
To find more technical information and to search products, visit ti.com forward slash clocks. Please try a short quiz to check your understanding of this video's content.